What's up guys? I'm Ben and this is Kame Trick. It's the channel that bridges the gap between sim drifting and drifting in real life. Here we enjoy both and welcome back to another video in my tutorial playlist on how to get into sim drifting in Assetto Corsa with mods. Today we're going to be installing what is objectively the most important mod to have for Assetto Corsa, which is Custom Shaders Patch, also known as CSP. And the reason that you want it, aside from the fact that it makes the game look incredible, is because a good number of mod tracks, and maybe even some car packs, require it in order to function. So simply, by installing CSP, you're going to cut down probably one third of the issues that you'd have enjoying modded drift content in Assetto. A little bit about CSP, it started as a dynamic lighting extension for the game, but over the years it's grown and expanded to include even more content. It has beautiful, massive plumes of smoke that look excellent. We're going to show you a little bit about how to set that up. It's got sparks flying off of the cars if you bottom out from the Minami jump or do a wall tap. Uh, it's got uh, an enhanced motion blur for screenshots. And in general, it just looks awesome. It also partners with Soul, which we'll cover in my next video, which is a dynamic weather uh, effects mod to make night drifting and rain drifting possible. So it's a really great mod to have, and it's not too hard to install. So let's check it out. First, we'll need to open up your web browser of choice, and you're just going to do a search for Assetto Corsa Custom Shaders Patch. That's going to take you to AC Stuff. Dot RU, where you can click in here. Now there are a few requirements that you're going to need to meet before you can install Custom Shaders Patch. First of all, you need to be running 64-bit Assetto Corsa. I don't imagine at this point that too many folks are running 32-bit systems, but if you are, you are going to have to upgrade your system before you can enjoy all the benefits that Custom Shaders Patch has. Outside of that, you also have to have at least Visual C++ redistributable uh, 2015 X86. Now, this is something pretty common to uh, your operating system if you're running Windows, so odds are you don't actually need this, but if you have any trouble, all that you do is you click here, go to download, check the box for X86, and hit next. A window will open where you can save it to your desktop, and you'll be able to close that, and you'll have this file on your desktop. You will double click it, you'll click install, it's going to ask you for permission. You'll hit yes, and then you wait for it to complete and hit close. Don't mind the fact that my operating system is in Japanese. Then you are done with that file, and it's just that simple. But again, you probably won't need that step. So moving right along, we're going to download Custom Shaders Patch. Now you'll see here in the download section, there are two main versions listed along with all the other versions down below. You've got one in green, which is the recommended version. It's gonna be the most uh, stable. And then you've got the latest version as well. Me personally, I run the latest version and I've never had any problems. However, for the uh, purpose of this video and to show you how easy it is to upgrade and move around to different versions after you've performed a manual install of custom shaders patch one time, we're going to start by installing the recommended version. So we'll just click here and we're going to save this to the desktop. And now we are done with our web browser so we can go ahead and close this. And now we've got our archive file right here. It is called lights patch. We'll double click it, wait for uh, WinRAR to ask me to buy it. I won't. We'll uh, go in and drag our mods folder out onto the desktop. And we're done with the archive file. So we're gonna go into mods. Then we're gonna go into shaders lights patch. And we're gonna grab the extension folder here and dwrite.dll. We do not need description.jsgme because we're using the unlocked version of Content Manager, so we don't have to rely on that. Next, we're going to open a, another File Explorer window, and if you followed my previous tutorial, you will have your Assetto Corsa root folder mapped right here, and you can just click it to get into it. But if you don't, here's the file path. It's going to be local disk, program files, x86, Steam, Steam apps, common, and Assetto Corsa. And what we're going to do is just drag extension and dwrite.dll into the Assetto Corsa root folder like so. Now we can close this, and that wraps up the transfer part of the process. Now we can open Content Manager, which if you followed my previous tutorials, you'll have pinned to your taskbar. At least that's what I recommend. And we'll be able to confirm that everything is ready by going into Settings at the top right. And then Custom Shaders Patch. 
at the sort of top left. And you should see this screen here for your about and updates where you land. What it's going to show is the currently active version that we installed, that 1.25, as well as a list of all the available versions. And they have three statuses, untested, buggy, and we'll scroll down to where we're at, way down here in the green, the recommended version. Uh, it'll also, if you hover over the level or the preview version, it will actually tell you some of the things that they've implemented for that. Now, we have completed our one-time manual install of Custom Shaders Patch, and what's really cool about this is now that we've done that, every time that we want to update to a new version, all we have to do is go into Settings, Custom Shaders Patch here in Content Manager, and click one of these other versions, and it will automatically install and put everything in the correct place for us. So, what I personally do when I run Content Manager, and this is what I recommend you try as well, is I just boldly go right up to the latest version, 1.4. So you'll see, we'll click here, and it's going to install right here. Taking care of everything that we need. This is going to let us be the most compatible with all the newest content. And it's that simple. We are now updated to the latest version of CSP. Most of the issues that people run into with modded tracks have to do with not having CSP at all. However, it's possible in theory for a track to be too new or too old for the version of uh, custom shaders patch that you're running. So if you have a track you want to try and you're having some issues with it being buggy and you know that you've installed it correctly by doing a content manager based install, you are able to look up what version it's known to work with and you can just go back through, find it, click it, and then you should be good to go. An example of a couple of awesome tracks that I really enjoy and recommend to you that require custom shaders patch are uh, the new Ebisu Toge course by 90s Golden Drift Spot Project. That's a really fun one. And another really enjoyable track is the new Meihan 2020 course by uh, Soyo and Okami. Also, uh, I got to have Okami on my channel recently for a uh, Tandem Talk video podcast. So if you've not checked that out, I'll link it as well up here. And uh, be sure to give that a watch when you're done with this tutorial video. I've made the window a little bit bigger so it's easier to see. Next, we're going to go to Cars, Configs, and over at the upper right, there are these three dots. We're gonna click that and make sure that Install Automatically Recommended is ticked. You'll see now it's got a checkbox there. And we're just gonna go down the rest of these under patch and do the same thing. What this is going to do is ensure that your content looks as good as possible. Uh, essentially, whenever you run these different things, you're going to make sure that it's getting all of the latest. You can also manually install these by selecting install 16 entries in this case, and you'll see it'll automatically install this. But right now I'm on basically a vanilla copy of Assetto Corsa, so there's not a whole lot of uh, tracks. However, it will make the existing official Kunos tracks look a lot better. Either way, if you choose to do that or not, when you're done, you want to make sure that install automatically is selected. And we will wrap up by doing the same for backgrounds. For extensions, generally you will be able to tell what the extension does based upon the name. And if you're not sure, if you hover your mouse over the extension, a pop-up window will appear and give you more information. Second of all, active extensions are highlighted in white and ones that are not currently activated are grayed out like chaser camera, chat shortcuts, and extra effects. In order to activate one of those, you just click into it and at the top left there is an extension active checkbox which if you tick, it will become active and now it is also highlighted in white. Additionally, you'll see that any changes that you have made from the defaults will be listed in red. So if I move this like joystick dead zone, for example, it will turn red and all that does is it indicates that it is a non-default setting. If you want to go back to default settings for a given extension, at any time there is a reset button that is always available and clicking it will put everything back to the defaults up to and including actually disabling the extension. One of the uh, extensions I want to draw your attention to real quick is down here, Nice Screenshots. It already, just with its default settings, does a lot of things to make the screenshots that you can take in game more appealing. However, what is really special about it is this accumulation motion blur for replays. If you tick this box, then when you use your F buttons, which I will cover in a separate video on how to take awesome screenshots in a set of Corsa, 
But when you use the F buttons instead of the official photo mode, it allows the camera to track with the car. And you can basically focus the camera on a car of your choice. And then when you use the F buttons to take a photo, it will actually apply a motion blur to everything besides that car that is in focus. And it looks really good, like magazine style, high quality shots. I'll toss a few examples up here as I'm speaking about it. One important note, however, is that this will not look all that great for the traditional photo mode uh, images that you save. So that is something to turn on when you need it and it will look really nice. Next up is particles effects just below it. And this is where all the fun is for drifters because down here is new smoke and dust. And this is where you get that gorgeous formula drift style, massive plumes of smoke and their customizable plumes of smoke. In order to enjoy those, you're going to check the box for active to turn it on first of all. And then two things I want to draw your attention to are these sliders here, extra heating. This is a case where hovering over it is really helpful because that makes no sense to me. Extra heating for arcade like smoke. So it's default value is zero. And if you turn it up, you're going to get more arcade like smoke, experiment with it and see what you think. And the other really important one is density decrease with time percentage. This one basically determines how quickly the smoke fades. Eventually it will just sort of cross dissolve and fade out into nothingness. One really cool tip for both of these that I think is awesome is you can actually click into here and you can apply a negative value. These are settings that you can experiment with on your own, but the main thing for me is that I don't want to have like an 8.6 naturally aspirated car throwing up, you know, Pro 1 plumes of smoke because it's just not realistic at all. But do whatever makes you happy here. Play with it. It's a really cool setting. In an effort to keep things short and to the point for this video, I'm not going to cover all of these extensions in detail. These were just a couple that I think are awesome that I wanted to draw your attention to. So if you have any questions after exploring on your own, drop a comment and let me know. You're also welcome to join the Kame Trick Discord, which is linked in the description. We've got a lot of folks there who are happy to help you out with any technical questions about modding in Assetto Corsa. It is a great and growing community. We'd love to have you a part of it. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, and I encourage you to check out some of the real life drifting content and sim drifting content on my channel because I'm not really a tutorial channel. I'm actually all about the driving. I just wanted to do this to help the community grow and get more people into sim drifting. So thank you guys for watching. Have a good night. Peace.